Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cute little baby album. And this is using the Craft O'Clock paper collection called Sweet Princess. Now this is an envelope style mini album and I'll just give you a quick look at it. It's got lots of little neat flaps and this right here, these envelope tabs, this is where the uh, person can put like cards that say congratulations that they got when the baby was born or maybe cards from the baby shower. Look how cute this is. And you can even slide a, uh, a photo in underneath here. I know you might not be able to see that there. But you'll be able to see in this video just how easy it is to construct this album. And look at, look at all the little cards and little decorations. Super, super cute. And it's got these glittery, let's see if you can see these glittery embellishments. That's all just from the extras to cut that come with the paper collection. And how many pages do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six pages. So six little envelope flaps. Look at that little tuck spot. And then there's a tuck spot at the end. And this also uses one of the um, covers, which are exclusive to Craft O'Clock papers. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to make this, so stick around. So for this project, I'm gonna be using the Sweet Princess Collection from Craft O'Clock. And we've got the Project Life cards, which is a set of cards here. They're cut apart, basically, and it's got Oh, look how cute. Look how nice. These are going to be great. And they, they're they double-sided, but it's got the Polish on the one side. And then the English on the other. Okay, look. Look, welcome to the world. Oh, yes. So we're definitely going to be using these. Um, oh, and then a little smaller one so you can do a card. Or a little tag. That's adorable. Okay, and then we've got the quotes, and these we'll just cut apart as uh, we need to in the embellishment phase. And these are the extras to cut. This is set number one, um, which is premium. I, I actually think this is going to be plenty. And I'm using the glitter set. You can see the, the glitter there. But it's a really, really high quality glitter. It does not come off on your fingers, and it bends with the paper. I love that. And then we'll be using uh, the 12 by 12 uh, pack of paper, which is six double-sided sheets. And um, look how perfect this is, because it coordinates. So we've got six sheets, and then usually they do something nice, like put something on the back. Yeah, they do. On the back of this. They put little postcards on the back of their packaging. I like that they do that. And let's just take a look at the papers. Oh my goodness. And the weight is, um, the weight of the paper is pr pretty good. I don't have my readers on right there, but there is a, I'll try to back up so you can see. Okay, there's the details of the paper. It's a really, really high quality paper. And I love that they put the color palette down there on each, on each paper. Sweet Princess. There's the double-sided. Here, we'll go like this so you can see. All right, and you'll see them as I go. It, like I said, it comes with six sheets. We will probably... Oh, look. Look at that. Oh, just lovely. And then this one has some cut aparts and then the same pattern and then I'm going to be using a, a cover a large cover and this has the same pattern but um, this cover it's like a specially treated like almost like a laminated but not laminated um, it's like coated I guess is the best way to put it paper and we'll be using that for the cover and we're gonna make this um, this cute envelope album now what I want to tell you is that this is a regular envelope and this is five by seven inches. When we make this 
what we're gonna do is actually make like a we're gonna make like a little fold right there when we make our envelopes and here we're gonna make it so that there's like a fold right there okay like the same here as here as down here and that way the new mom can put all the cards in it that she received for her baby shower so what I want to do is make the envelopes actually out of this paper I want to make the envelopes out of the paper and I want to use my uh, envelope punch board now if you live outside of the US and you operate um, with centimeters instead of inches they do have um, a guide that comes with the centimeters okay and in the description box below this video I will have a link where you can if you would like to pick up one of these um, pretty sure they have them on scrapbook.com and Amazon as well so I will pick up or put some links there and also paper just keep your eye out for the paper available soon um, depending on when you're watching this at the sandpaper road shop so I'm slowly trying to increase the craft o'clock inventory it is a little bit of a process but you can certainly shop if you're in the USA at sandpaper road for craft o'clock products so let's get started okay so to get started we're gonna look at the measurements on the punch board to see what size we need to cut the paper to make the envelopes to fit together so I'm actually going to do the this a8 size so what I do is I cut the paper to ten and a half inches by ten and a half inches and then when I get ready to start making the envelopes, I go up here to the four and a half mark, which is in inches. And that's where I put the paper right there to make my first punch. Now, this is the centimeter one. So here we have A8. So these are the measurements in centimeters, 14 by, I don't know if you say 2.3 or two and three centimeters. And uh, that is the size of the card that we want. That is the card size that we want. So then we will have, um, we're gonna cut the paper to 26 and seven by 26 and seven centimeters and then we will score at 11 and four at the, at the score line. We're gonna do that. This is the paper size and that's the score line. So we'll go up here to the, uh, what was it? The 11 and four centimeter score line, which can you see right there is down here. So it'll be over here, which is essentially the same line, obviously. Okay, it's the same line. Down here is the centimeters and up here is the inches. And then you'll punch it right there. Okay, so that's how that goes. Um, that is probably one of my favorite tools to use of all time. And so I, I use it pretty frequently. So we're gonna be cutting, I'm gonna speak in inches because uh, I'm over here in the US. And so we're cutting to 10 and a half by 10 and a half inches. Uh oh this upside down let's do this one first okay I will show you in detail on the one and then um, probably not necessary to keep going from here so ten and a half and the mark is right there I have a piece of washi tape there's the ten and a half okay and we'll save that turn up ten and a half right there and now we 
we take this and we're going to line it up at the four and a half or in centimeters it's the 11 and 4 centimeters okay right there and what we do is punch first and then score like that down now it doesn't quite reach then you turn it then you take this notch that's right here and you line it up with the score with the score line okay and you score here turn it line that up with the score line and you turn it and line that up with the score line. Whoopsie. Okay. And then you punch the corner and the corner. All right. Now, And this will make our envelope. Now I've done this before with um, a different collection and my friend that I gave uh, the gift to, she loved it so much. They, they really make great gifts. Okay. Now, before we go any further, let's check and make sure that our envelope is going to fit on the cover. Yes, it is. All right, good. Okay, very good. Now, Before we add our, where's my glue? Before we add our glue, we want to add a score line here, which is a quarter of an inch of a score line. And we want to add a score line here, which is an eighth of an inch of a score line. Okay. So here, an eighth of an inch. Here, a quarter of an inch. So the quarter of an inch first, and I don't have a score tool, so what I have to do is I can use my paper trimmer and just line up this here and line up this here. Oops, that would mean that I was scoring there, right? So let me turn this around this way. Turn this around this way. This would be half. Where is this? Where is the quarter? Quarter inch would be this mark right there, and this mark right there. Okay. So, I line up the fold. That's the fold. And I line it up with that mark there. Kind of eyeballing, actually. There we go. I actually think this paper cutter has a score blade. I should use it more often. I forgot about it. Actually. Actually. 
There, see that? That is, now we will have a score line here on the envelope. So when we put the envelopes together, we've got that. Now the eighth of an inch one is gonna be a little bit trickier. Uh, hmm, does this even have eighth of an inch? I don't even think it does. Let's see if this one does. Oh yeah, that one does. Sixteenth of an inch. One eighth of an inch. Okay, there we go. So we'll look at the one, boy, this is, I think I'm just going to have to mark it after all this. Okay, the eighth of an inch is here. Yeah, the eighth of an inch is here. Yeah, because I'm not going to try to eyeball that. As a matter of fact, I'd probably get better results if I just marked it anyway. So, I'll do that way from now on. Okay. Mark it. Line that up. Okay. And then here is our eighth of an inch. It's much smaller. There we go. All right. Now we can put our envelope together with the glue. Like this. Yeah, like that. But this guy right here wants to be tricky. Okay. It's better. Mm-hmm. And we'll glue like that. Glue like that. All I need is a big glob. Okay. Now, what we want is this to stand up. There we go. There, that's better. That is much better. All right. And now we have our envelope with a quarter of an inch. And the bottom has an eighth of an inch. Very good. Okay, so I've made envelopes out of the six sheets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they all have, well, they're all supposed to have. Now, I'm hesitating because sometimes this doesn't look like it's coming out perfect and certainly if you're going to do like a hidden hinge or um, some sort of other style of binding um, for some other purpose you're going to get more precise and perfect results um, like see now I've used the same scoring tool the same ruler the same measuring method and sometimes it just doesn't come out exact. The same paper trimmer, the same everything. And um, I suppose that's what they call human error. But it's still beautiful nonetheless. Now this small it thing is gonna be, this small edge, um, these are gonna be the outsides and these are gonna be the insides. So here's how we put this together. Um, now I can see clearly that somehow something got funny and that I have this green one greenish one is clearly about an eighth of an inch bigger than all the other ones so what I'm gonna do is make that one the one that's outside oh I shouldn't have scored this one dang it dang it I should have waited to score this I wasn't thinking um, that's okay it'll just have two score lines 
we'll put extra adhesive. This will be the one, what happens is, it'll be the, the one that's in the back, and this flap wraps around the whole pile of these, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side so I remember that that's the last one. And what we do is turn it um, this way, slip it inside and one of the other ones, and we're gonna pair them up, okay? And if one of them doesn't fit just good, um, just kind of work it a little bit, okay? Don't worry about the pencil marks at all, okay? There we go. And even though they're just sitting in here loose, for now, did I not fold that? Oh, I just didn't fold it well. Okay. See that? Okay, see what's happening? Now we'll do our next pair. You fold it clear around backwards behind and then slide it into the other one, all right? Now if one, if you're finding that they don't fit uh, very well, just try it in a different one. And if you run out of options, you might have to like trim some down. They should all fit inside each other pretty well, okay? Again, this is a, just a little project for um, being able to store the cards that some, I, did I make that an eighth of an inch? I wonder if I didn't do that right there. That looks pretty small. What's going on with my ruler? No, I made it a quarter of an inch. I just, I just, I just made it a little small. I scored it a little funny. Let me see here. This is a really good idea, like keepsake albums, especially for um, baby shower. That's what this is for. Baby shower, new baby, um, whatever. Do you know what? Do I have... And then this is going to be the last one, right? So this will wrap around all of them. This seems just a little bit loose. I wonder if there's a better fit. Because essentially what we're gonna do is put them all like this. In fact, I'm gonna take this out. Because we're gonna connect them all. This one might fit a little better. Okay. Like so. I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then this one goes back behind this one. It, it doesn't matter. You're just, you really don't even have to put them in quote unquote pairs. You're just trying to make them all together. This one was small, that's why I kind of wanted this one to go in a different spot. Yeah, like that, that could be the last one. Okay, good. Now, see there's our binding and there's our outside. Binding is in quotes. Now, I'm gonna fold this over and just um, kind of, I don't wanna say eyeball, cause it's not really true. And I know you cannot see what I'm doing. There you go, now you can see what I'm doing. I'm just holding this, see, see how I scored that right there? And I should have waited, because where I really want the score line, I really don't want it right here. I can put an X on it to show you, I don't want it there. Where I really want the score line is over here because then what's gonna happen is this flap is gonna come around and seal right like that. So let me take these out and get this here. Someday I'm going to buy a score tool. Please don't ask why I haven't already. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't really even have a reason. I guess it's just when I go to pick up, you know, adhesive or um, a, a new stamp set or a new, you know, tool or something. That's not, I just overlook it, I forget. And then I always, at this stage of the craft, do I say, I wish I had a score tool, but oh well, I'll get, I'll get one someday. Okay, 
Now, how did I have it is the question. I had this inside this one, right? Is that right? Did I have it like that? That can't be right. I can't remember how I had it. I must have. No, this one I put in last. I can't remember how I had it. But it has to go, this one has to go around the whole thing. So it had to have been in here like this. This had to be in like this. And then this had to go around the whole thing. Okay. There, see? See how that just locked right in there? Just perfect. Now, where we're not going to put any adhesive is here. We need to have room for this to move. Although, I've rethought this a bunch of times. And I just can't know if that's the right choice. I don't, I think I need that room to move. Yeah, I do, because look, because look, when I open it up, it has to move. Yep, it has to. Okay, now, before we seal this down, we're gonna kind of seal these envelopes into each other. That's how it, this is how it's gonna go, okay? That's the goal. Let's do it three and three, okay? And today, do you know what I'm gonna try to do today? I'm gonna, I have my hot glue gun on and hot, so I think I might try to use the hot glue gun. I've done it once before, once. Oh, I'm scared. What's the one to start with? Is it this one? What happens is you kind of tip it up and you shove the hot glue on it. Well, I just, I just don't think it's gonna hold good. No, I'm not going to because I won't have it, I, because once I do it like that, then I've done it like that. Okay, I'm gonna use liquid adhesive. Where is, do you know what I want? I want, didn't I have some, uh, I thought I had some, yes, I did, some of this. A brand new bottle. This is what I want for this project. That is what I want. Okay, good. Now, now, is this how this went? Now look at this right here. See how I can fold that and then fold that? We're going to, this is how we'll uh, burnish burnish like this, okay? So let's start with the... Last one. Okay. That's how we're going to do it. Put the adhesive right here. Oh, goodness. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Where's my towel? Okay. Line that up with the crease line and fold it back. Line it up down here. And we're gonna brush that like that. Okay, yes, that is how. No, you know what I've done before? I've done it, I think I did it with glue lines and glue dots. That works well also. 
I and like I said, I have done it with the glue gun before. And uh, now this is going to go like this. So the adhesive needs to go here. Okay. And, and this takes some practice. I think I did, like, I, I probably have done five crappy ones for every, I don't, I don't even know how to say what I'm saying. Just, when I wanted this to work, I wanted it to look a certain way. And I had to, I ended up doing like five crappy ones to get it to look the way I wanted. And then I, like this this little trick right here of fold, being able to fold it all the way flat is something I didn't do right away. I was just trying to make a way to do it, but I couldn't get it straight, I couldn't get it lined up, and it still might not be like, see that? Certainly if you are a perfectionist by nature and every single project you do has to be perfectly lined up and straight, you may find a lot of frustration with this, but the results, the truth is, is that people who receive, what's going on here? Oh, the people who receive these as gifts, they don't, they don't see that. They don't see that little quarter of an inch mismatch or that, the one I made as a wedding keepsake album, I have like a four part tutorial on how to make it literally step by step by step by step by step. And my friend who I gave that to, she she just loved it. It was for her wedding gift, actually. And um, yeah, she, she really liked it. And she's like that detailed and stuff. And if anybody would probably um, notice something that was off, she would probably notice it. But it was so pretty to her. I included photos of them, and um, I don't think I put the photos in the video, though, but just the, like, little fold flaps and stuff, and just, you know, you can really make it really personal. I'm so glad I had this glue. It has been a long time since I, I used to go through bottles and bottles and bottles of that. And then I started using other kinds. Not for any reason, I just did. I just, I don't know, I just changed it up a bit. But I really like that too, a lot. Okay, there we go. That's gonna be, this is gonna be very nice. This is lining up very nice. This glue holds amazing also. And I like I like to use it, ooh, because it's got this thicker tip and then it's got a fine tip. So yeah, I forgot I had it. I didn't remember till just that second. Ooh, yikes. I'm having problems. There we go. Look how nice that is. If I can get this part done, before I have to go pick up my son, that would be amazing. Because then it can sit like under a book or under my under something heavy and just sit there like that. Okay. Now this should fold over just like that. But how am I gonna, I guess just the glue will go right here on the line, obviously. How about that? Okay, yeah, that's what's gonna happen. I'm just not gonna let any go past that line, as I almost did. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And it won't matter, because it's, yeah, that'll be good. Is this right? Is this doing what I want it to do? Get under there. Ha ha. Why is that all smushy weird? Look. I did that too far over. Don't 
get too sticky yet. Oh my goodness. Well, that might be where it's going. Good grief. Did you see how quick that stuck down? I don't want it to be right there because I don't have any room. I don't want it to be right, right, right there. I'm going to see if this undo can work. Just for, I didn't know it was going to stick that quick. Good grief. Will it, will it unstick it? Oh yeah, it will. Good. Yeah, dang. I didn't know it was going to, okay. I wish there was a way. I know that looks kind of weird, but it's just because that undo. Now, look what I'm trying to do. I guess I can't do it all flat like that. I'm going to have to hold it up or I'm going to lose the binding there. Oh, yeah. I was way off. I have to, I have to hold it up. Let's see how much it like that. There's like no other way to do it, unless I had something in between, like a, um, I wonder if I could do, oh no, how would I do it? No, I can't. I was going to say, I wish I could put something like in between right in here. Maybe I can. I can't think of how to do it. I. I'm trying to get something like right here. Maybe that'll, that's too thick. Maybe this will do it. This might do it. This might do it. It's not, that's not thick enough. Ugh. Oh well. Oh well, good old fashioned pressure, I guess, is going to have to be it. Good. Now see, see if I would have left it like that, I would have totally lost this pink, this last outside one. I had it like clear smushed flat like that. So that's why I took the, I used the undo and took it apart. See now I can, okay, okay, now that I have it in place, now I can do that. Ooh, with lots of glue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Don't worry if it, if it's messy. Okay, either there. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Good. Okay, so I'm ready for the covering part. And this is a, one of the covers by Craft O'Clock. And it comes in this, it's this long paper. And it's treated in a special way. I don't know if you can tell. It looks just like regular paper. But um, it isn't. It's sort of got a... I don't know how to explain it, but it's treated in such a way where it's not gonna, it's not just like regular paper. It'd be like the equivalent if you would add Tyvek to your albums. And it comes in coordinating colors with the paper. Isn't that nice? See? So we'll use this for our cover. And I've already cut some chipboard, which is really just cereal box. Now, the cereal box, though, I will say I double up because it's really, really not strong enough. So this is two pieces and two pieces and two pieces. Okay. Um, and if you're going to use a cereal box, what you really should do is sand the one side uh, or it just won't hold the glue. It'll just slide around. So just take a little, it, I mean, it just takes two seconds and take care of that. And you'll be very happy that you did. Okay. Get up all that stuff there. All right. Oops. Okay. So the dimensions here we have, um, and it did take a little bit of trial and error. Some people use like a simple formula or whatever, like your page plus half an inch. I suppose that works, but I can't rely on that. So I always just kind of hold it and see. Um, 
I like to have a little bit of a lip because think about it when it's sitting there like that it'll move and fill and stuff so um, so this ended up to be six and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches or uh, 15 and eight centimeters by 20 and six centimeters not sure if I'm reading the centimeters correctly out of my mouth but I'm doing my best the spine we have is uh, one and a half inches by four uh, one and a half inches by eight and one eighth inch and then in centimeters four centimeters by twenty and a half centimeters and what I did to get that is just held that like this here okay and then tried to measure along this way and as you can see you I mean it's really just a matter of holding it and measuring it okay I am still in the learning game. I, I don't uh, really consider myself a pro at this, but it doesn't seem like it's very difficult. So, you know, and it's for you. It's, I mean, now, where is my, okay. When I'm spacing this out, I have in the past put like a popsicle stick right there. That actually does not seem to be enough room for me. So today I'm going to do two and um, you know what I should do is take them in and glue two together and then use that as a guide. You know, that's what I'm going to do before I do this. Uh oh, because I had it holding the other way. A little bit much there good grief it's not gonna hurt anything but this is pretty sticky glue okay. do I have like a oh yeah I do all right like a close pin or something okay while that is doing its thing I will glue down the spine so I am not uh, measuring, you know, like so much from here, so much from here. I'm kind of just eyeballing it um, logically. Okay. And I will put down the spine first. You could measure it. I wouldn't, it definitely wouldn't hurt anything. I just um, kind of don't feel like it. And definitely use a strong glue. And this time, instead of using my finger and getting my finger all um, chomped up here, I think I'm going to use a piece of cardboard instead. Yeah, that's much better. Like so. Boy, that is still so sticky. So then I'm going to take my two popsicle stick spacer and just sort of balance it in there and glue down my other side like this okay and then I will glue down my other side like that with the spacer like going right up against the just like that so I'll glue that down there then I'll pick this up move it over here glue it down there push it and remove the spacer and I'll have it like that okay all right so I glued that down with my spacer and then um, I flip that over I'm gonna use my bone folder just to kind of rub this out all right and make sure that it's all smooth
Now, regardless of what kind of, this I will talk to you while I'm doing this, regardless of what kind of inserts you're doing, if you were doing, um, you know, hidden hinge or, you know, some other sort of uh, binding system, you see, you see how this is right here? I know I'm jumping all over the place with my, but look, these little, th they just rub right off. It's, it's this treated paper where it's, it's not like it's laminated because it's still a matte finish, but it's smooth. It's treated in such a way that it can like withstand, basically like to withstand the stuff that happens to the outside of an album over time. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. Okay, so regardless of the kind of inserts or pages you use then inside, the outside, you could still do this, uh, follow the same formula, okay? So, very nice. Now what we'll do is um, score, but I would like to have something a little bit softer oops, to have under here. Um, oh, maybe that was better. That I, maybe that's a little bit too much space. I need my other one. Where's my, yeah, this one. Yeah, this one, well, this one, right. Let's run the score tool right here through this through the crease. Okay, so that it can fold nice and easily. Look at that. See? Isn't that nice? Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. I'm also gonna, I personally like to run it along the sides here just because I don't like to force it. Now, if I was just doing this on the table, it wouldn't, it, uh, it, I, I need to have something that it can press into, so. All right, now this will fold very nice and easily over, but let me just wait a second because what I wanna do is actually cut right here, cut right here. Um, can certainly use some sort of like a mitering tool or an angle or something like that. Um, I don't know. I just kind of eyeball it, I guess. I'm sure this is not the professional way to do it. I just leave myself a little bit of room. I think it's sort of an everyday crafters way. Okay, so guess what I'll do here. Let me show you the let me show you the cover paper with this piece I just cut off. Okay, um, so I'm going to try to tear it. Now, when I tear it, now you can see, see this. It's like a coating. Okay, I don't know how to. It, it's like a coating on the top and it's really really strong there's a better view of it trying to tear do you see that it's got some sort of a where it's the there is like the regular paper but it's like a treated coating okay so it's got to withstand the stuff and I know you saw of course that I ripped it that easily like that yeah but you're not going to be having the edge of this paper like that. It's, I mean, look at what's look, what we're doing here. So, but that's the premise of the cover. Okay. Now I'm leaving just a, the littlest bit of edge there. I'm not cutting clear up to the corner. And I'm going to do this on all of them. Maybe I'll leave these to the side. Uh, maybe I want to do punch outs or I don't know, something else. I'm not, I don't know yet, but aside from the one that I tore. Okay, maybe I'll just put these off to the side. Okay. And now we will 
add our glue here, 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 and fold everything in, in, and in. All right. Very nice. There. See how nice that is? That's great. Okay, so far so good. I find this to be helpful. Just running my spore tool up from underneath, holding it right here. Hold your your bone folder or your score tool and just run it and give it give it a little crease before you do glue. That's I find that helpful. Yeah, definitely the microfiber cloth. Definitely. Just a little bit. I mean, just the slightest amount. A just slight damp. Like, no no more damp than a baby wipe. Uh, but that's pretty helpful. Okay. All right, good. There. Very nice. Look at that. Clean this up a little bit here. Most of this is probably from my table. But because it's that cover paper, it comes, it just comes right off. It just wipes right off. Yeah, that's definitely cut from my table. Just little stickies. All right. Wonderful. And now I'm actually going to use a medium cover. And what I'm going to do is cut it just as such and put it right there. And look how nice that's going to look. So we're going to have double strength here with this cover. Um, so to get it right, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is just lay it, but I'll lay it face down here like this. And just simply use a pencil and my T ruler like this. It looks like my book isn't very straight. This is what it looks like. Okay. And we'll just go like that. Yep. And that's what we'll do. And I'll cut that right there. I love that it's perfect. And then I can use that even for like small books or I don't know, maybe a, a tag or some other embellishment or something. I don't know, but I'm not going to throw away this good piece of cover. So I'll save that. I did find that uh, a very good quality liquid glue, or even if you have like a gel medium or something, that that would be amazing. This was um, almost impossible for me to get off, but I'm about out of it. So um, yeah, I wish it came in super bottles. I'm seriously about out of it. Wonder how far I can stretch, stretch it because this was really, the greatest adhesive and look it's got a big a big spreadable tip I don't know that I need very much either if I could just get enough to use at the end and I don't have another bottle on hand that's why I'm being so so like this okay let's see we'll let maybe we can And get a um, just some scrap paper or something here, and a piece of just scrap cardboard to spread. Oh, I I think this might do it. 
think it might. I think I may be in luck. If I can get to the edges, I'm happy. I don't know. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's sticking to my fingers as I go. Okay. good. What happened to my, there we go. I, spreading from the middle and working my way out this way. about that. I can see that I'm getting it all the way to the edges. Wonderful. This is going to be so nice. Now I do have, I need to get this wet though. I do have a microfiber cloth. I have a different one than I did earlier because the other one got sticky. And um, because this has sort of a smooth, this paper has sort of a smooth um, texture, and because it's treated, I can run this. Oh, I guess I don't need to get it, but oh, wait, maybe I do. Well, I have a spray bottle. Why don't I just, because I don't need it that wet, good grief. Just to get off this glue that's sort of sticky right there. Yeah. Plus it helps burnish, but okay. Very nice. Okay. Um, so again, the pages, here we are. We're going to make sure that they are turned the way that we want them to be turned. Um, again, mine got a little bit mangled because I had to perform a little bit of a surgery on my previous <laughs> On my previous cover. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a, of a sandpaper here and just here on the middle, okay, just here on the middle, as a matter of fact, let me make this sandpaper just a little bit smaller here on my finger. Okay, at just there, I'm going to just sand it just a little bit, okay, because that, um, that specially treated paper, it is good for everything. But sometimes, just sometimes, the glue uh, wants to just pop right off of it. So I'm just gonna remove just a little bit and of that and it's still gonna be just as strong, but will stick a little bit better, okay? And then, ooh. Let's see if what I can get out of here. Again, this is only cardboardy because like I said, it was horribly mangled. Boy, if this isn't just real life scrapbooking it here, I run out of glue on camera. Um, let's see if we can do this a little bit better. My, my <laughs> this really is like real world scrapbooking. Okay, that's a little bit better. There we go. Now only on the, um, normally I wouldn't do quite that much glue, but because I have this weird problem here, it's going to get absorbed. So yeah, that is clearly way too much glue. That's okay. That's okay, that's why it stuck so well the first time. I even used, I used undo, which I use a lot, and I it wouldn't undo. Okay. All right. There we go. 
Now, let me make sure, because I lost track of what I was doing, which way I wanted this to go. Yes, this way. All right. Here we go. Now I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to eyeball it right into the middle here. I've got some wiggle room time because um, it's wet glue. I can adjust it and pull this up to make sure that it's in the center. Very, very nice. Very, not very nice. Where is my popsicle stick? And what I'm going to do, the technique to push down, is just drop down one page at a time and just gently push in between the pages. That's how I'm telling you, if you would have seen the, um, the problem that I had, you'd understand. It was really stuck. And I was actually very pleased with that. It, very pleased with it and how well it stuck. So, remember we want this to stick because we want this to be the album that, you know, the, the mom, the new mom can keep her um, cards in from when, she, from her baby shower or, you know, whatever. I did shift that just a little bit there. That glue. Okay, and let's see if I fold this this way. Will it do the same thing? Yes, it will. Good. Good, good, good. This doesn't matter. It's all sticky and mangled against the page. We're going to put a new page over top of this anyway. Okay, so this is all nice and smooth. Wouldn't this be, wouldn't it be fun to have a pocket right there? Wouldn't it be fun if I used this to make a pocket? I think I'm going to. I think it should be in the back. I'm totally going to do that. What a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so what I'll do while this is drying is um, I could see that it won't matter whether I uh, have it laying this way or this way. It's good both ways. So what I'll do is put a heavy object on this over to the side when it's all dry. We'll come back and uh, start to make cool and interesting little things in the book. I'm so happy I did this this way. Great. Okay, so this is all nice and dry. Look how nice that looks. Now when you tip up an envelope album, um, it lays flat, but remember here's where it's gotta have some movement right here um, for the pages to open up. So the part that's glued down, can you see that? Is there. The rest of this moves freely. And it looks really good. I'm this I'm very happy with this. I am not happy with this right here and that's because it got I told you before I had to perform a surgery. But look at that. So now when we flip through, now they can uh the new mother can put her cards from do i have this right side up hold on make sure i have it right side up oh no i did have it right before yeah that's really nice that the cards can go uh right in here but we are going to cover this up and so and now the fun part starts and i do want to add a little pocket right here okay so we have some scraps left over from our 12 by 12 pack I have all these strip things. We can use those as some accents maybe. I don't know that we'll use this, although we could cut her out and use her later. But um, So I have the Project Life cards, which is nice. And I was thinking this one right here would be perfect for the beginning of the book. Right here. Wouldn't that be good? But I don't want it to go, I still want to cover this up and make it look like a little bit nicer. So I think what I'm going to have to do is bring in um, an 8x8 pack also. 
yeah I think so because I would like to have a little bit of contrast I don't see a lot of the gray that I used I mean I can obviously see it in the paper here yeah but the 8 by 8 is really going to be uh, nice I think so I think I will yeah nice so uh, let's just, let me just see what's on the, actually I'm gonna leave this open here so I can be inspired because I'm trying to cover up this page. So let's see what's in here. We have two, I believe there's 10 sheets in here. Let me show you the details. Um, yes, 10 double-sided sheets. Um, if you are confused, this is Polish here. And then uh, let's look at the English if you're uh, an English speaker, set of 10 double-sided papers, um, two of each design, uh, plus two extra patterns on the other side of the cover. Very, very, very nice. So these are the ones on the other side of the cover. I love that. They coordinate. And then we've got uh, just smaller scale versions of the, the same papers that we've seen already. But what do we want here? I really liked that gray. That is what ooh, but I like that too because look how this would this would be nice remember I got to think it's gonna go here it's gonna go this is gonna go on it that would look nice there it'd be cool if I could cut that out hmm. I don't know that I want to do all that let me put that there because that's what I'm going to keep in mind. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't really want pink next to pink. That's a lot, lot, lot. The green is okay, but oh, look at the flowers. Yeah, it's definitely going to be the gray. And I'll put these out of my way as well. So, yeah, that's really nice. Let me see what I am working with okay and let me see the size that I am working with if I was doing this do I want it to go right here I really want this guy if possible to be up what is the measurement how far do I want it to go five and three quarters no yeah uh, like 14 and a half centimeters. That's a little bit more of an exact measurement. I'm so annoyed with this. How long, how is it if I went clear to the edge? Almost 15 centimeters, just shy of 15 centimeters. Five and three quarters. Yeah, let's do five and three quarters of an inch. And let's do um, three quarters of an inch. I better write that down. By seven and three quarters of an inch. All right, we'll do that. That's for my paper just to cover, but see, then I can use it for the back too. I'll use it for the back one. Okay. Five and three quarters of an inch. Let's see here. I am gonna go um, six and a quarter just to give me some room. Is that what I want? Six and a quarter. Yeah. Then six. See, now I can check and see because I gave myself just a little bit of margin and moved that over. Seven and three quarters. Six. 
seven and three quarters this way. Let's see where we're at. Almost. That's pretty good. Just that little quarter, but we'll cut it off from over here. But see, here's the thing. No, I will cut it off from over there because um, I don't want this to go clear over. Do I? Maybe I do. But look, it's going to cover it up anyway. Hmm. Oh, well. Let's put a frame around it and just call it a day. Because I don't like to spend that much time talking about a quarter of an inch. Five and three quarters. I get, that's the kind of stuff that, um, that's the kind of stuff that gets me off focus. And then I get distracted. And then I start thinking about randomness. So, yeah. That looks great. See, and that'll kind of cover up that little problem without taking away from the page itself. Perfect. Good. Now, now we can use the gray. All right. What happened to that gray piece? There. Did I mention how much I love this paper? I really, 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 and truly love this paper. All right, I'm going to save this because I want to do the back page also the same way. So this is the front page. And let's see, should I ink the edge? Should I do stuff like that? Ugh, then I have to ink every edge. No, I think I'll just leave it. But I think what I am going to do is, because I do want this to have a little bit of a frame. Let's see. I think I want to go like this. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Okay. Do I want two of those X's or just one? I think two looks kind of good. Yes, I know I've covered up that whole thing. I can hear you. I can't even, this isn't a live thing, so I know that I can't see, there's no comments to be had. But I, if I was watching this, I know I would say, well, why are you so exact about it if you're going to cover it up? Because I didn't know I was going to be exact about it. I just, that's, that's kind of how I just layer, you know, like this. All right, so if I go like this, then if I want, all right, so what I really want in my dream world is this to be X's all the way around. Now I can make that happen very easily, see? And because my fingernail is a magic tool and it came included with me. Yep, and now we'll cut pull this, see? All right, now, sometimes, <laughs> I forget where I marked it, especially in a thing like this. I have to tip it to the light. Oh, I can see it. I know you might not be able to see it, but if you tip it, if you do that, then you can tip it to, tip it to the light. You'll be able to see it just fine. This is beautiful. Isn't that just beautiful? Love it. Just beautiful. Okay. Where's my other one? Tip it to the light right there. Is that it? I think it is. Right there. Save that. Go like that. Yep. That is great. Mount this here like that. Good. So we'll go like that, and then what I'll do is use an extra, that one of the extras to put over top. And when I say extras, this is what I'm talking about. This is how they come. Wait, did I cut this already? Oh yes, I did. This, um, I don't have them all in front of me. They're in my, they're in my cupboard, but they come like this, except I'm going to use the one that is premium. Okay. That I've already cut out. And yes, you use scissors and you cut out all these things. They have envelopes to cut. And then this, 
the baby line that they have is so um, massive. There's so much stuff. To, you just can't ever get tired of it. Can't get enough of it. But look, the premium, you can either get it like a matte finish like this, or you can get it premium where it's got um, a glitter on it. And I really love it because um, it bends. It doesn't like uh, crack and come off. The glitter doesn't come off. And also it doesn't come off on your fingers. So it doesn't come off the paper or the finger or on my fingers. I don't know how they do it. It's magic. But anyway, I have the perfect, like, look, see, I have that. I knew I had this already. So if I wanted it that bad, I could have it going off the page or going over here. And look, I had this already as well. So I could go like that and put it on. So we'll, we'll fix it up here. Um, that that is why I didn't have um, too big of a freak attack when I was covering up stuff. So so yeah, we'll go like that. And um, so what I'll do is use just a tape runner, adhere this together, and then um, adhere it right to the front as such. Okay. It's going to look very nice. And then with the back, I'll put a piece on the back that I like and just um, get right back to you in a second. Okay, here's how it looks. Just the front page with nothing special over here. Then we flip through them and um, make sure that you just help each page along every time you add something to it. Okay, and then the back. Yeah, all I did was put, it was the same uh, pattern, but in the eight by eight, it went diagonally. And I thought that looked fine and blended in well. And then I had a scrap of this and I punched a little notch right in there. I used my punch board, punched a little notch in there and then you know, you can add a picture or something like that and it'll stay. But I thought that that would be kind of nice. And we can have these little, these little half pockets here all throughout the book. Um, just to add, I mean, as if there isn't already enough to do and to add, sometimes you want to just add a picture or like this one, you know, but let's add the pocket out here, um, with this leftover piece. And how are we going to do that? I definitely want to make sure that it goes in like so. Lines up with this and um, cuts right here. Because, and I'm just running my fingernail along. And that is where I want it. Okay. This was my little yeah, there's really not too much else to do with the album except for embellishing, and that is just a matter of preference, really. Um, I don't know that you want to watch me glue down stuff. Maybe you do. I don't know. So this is still that cover paper. Okay, that treated cover paper. Ooh. And um, let's see. We can eyeball a notch if you uh, are type A and would like it in the exact center. Certainly you can measure and find the center point, six and a quarter. What well, is not that hard to find a center measurement, so we'll even just do it. How about three and an eighth? Okay, just divide that by two. That should be a center measurement right there. And then there you have a with a center measurement right there in the pocket. That's actually really nice. I like that. Now, do I want glue? Yes, 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 yes. Instead of a tape runner or uh, both, why is this like this here? I think I have a little adhesive eraser. Okay. Okay, wet glue, yes. A very um, skinny, skinny line around the 
outside here should do it just fine hopefully you're still in the frame okay only on three sides since we are doing a pocket baby wipe and we're, we'll stick that right down and that's all there is to it folks that's that's pretty much it that is it it should fit perfectly because we cut it right to where we wanted it when it was laying down you can't even tell there's a pocket there unless you know there's a pocket there I like that That'll be nice if there's just a few extras, um, cards, pictures, things like that. There we go. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Good. And now we have a little pocket. A little pocket right there. And it closes real nice. Although, do you know what? Ooh, look what's happening though. Look at that when I close it. Why? Why is it doing that? It shouldn't. Because I know why. Do you know why? Because I had it too far. I had it in the score. See where the score line is? I had it in the score line and it made it buckle. All right. No problem. Um, but I want my other trimmer. So let's cut this. Uh, it's going to mess up our little center point measurement, but I, that, that's we're just going to have to deal. Let's cut that off and make it just a little bit smaller so we don't go onto that score line. That's what the issue was. Let's re glue. Uh oh. Let's try that. Where is our score line? Right there. Okay. I'm going to have to, sorry for your view, but I've got to hold this up or we're going to have the same problem. There we go. It kind of goes clear up to the edge, doesn't it? Well, that's, that's what's going to have to be. Okay. Thank goodness for this treated paper. See? That's exactly what I'm talking about. That kind of stuff. Regular paper would be mangled by now. Okay. Let's see if that is any better. Much better. Yep. See? No problems. Good. There's our pocket. There's our other pocket. That looks very nice. I'm very happy about that. Good. Cool. You know, your envelope album is just not going to, if you're waiting for it to lay like how the hinge style, the hidden hinge albums do, there, this is about the best that you can get. Here is the way this is laying. Um, it's never going to quite look like a hidden hinge looks because it isn't a hidden hinge or like um, just any other kind of album. So yeah, at this point, let's see what we can do to decorate. All right. And um, instead of doing it in real time, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to speed it up and sort of cut a little bit. Um, and just show you sort of a, a progression. 
so that you don't watch me just cutting and gluing because it does take a long time. Um, you know, there'll be nights where I just let this dry overnight, maybe with a heavy object on top of it, wake up the next morning, continue, okay? But we'll definitely uh, include you in the progress as we go. And stay tuned to the end uh, where you can see uh, the finished product. All right, so I'm adding a few more places to put photos. And because this is a gift album, I normally I would just maybe write photo on the blank pattern paper, but I decided to put like an actual photo mat so that you could see. So here's a spot like for a four by six photo. Um, and then you lift it up and there's one here. Just to cover that, I thought that was kind of neat. And then let's see what else I added. I think you saw this already. Here's another photo mat. Just trying to keep it simple um, and another one. And I'm also imagining that cards and, you know, things are going to be in these envelopes. This one I did add a little feature. Now this, I'm pretty sure you're able to, yeah, slide this down in and fit like a 4 by 6 picture. You might have to trim it just a bit um, to get it to fit a little bit better. And then this opens up to get, there's another smaller picture in there with a magnet closure. I did put a magnet, um, where did I put the magnet? Oh, it's behind the balloon. There's a magnet behind the balloon there and then the other one back here. So it stays shut. And then I put uh, these other closures here, or op little flap opens, and a place where you could, oh, I guess not. I put down that ear. I thought I was gonna slide that open, but I guess not. They could put like a little round picture here or something or some smallish pictures. Here and then that closure, I put the magnet behind this little rabbit and then the other one behind the balloons. This one I did just right. Oh, this is the one I thought. Yeah. Um, slide it behind the rabbits. So you could take it and just, you know, you kind of finagle it back in there. But um, yeah, then you can fit a four by six picture in there just like that. It's cute, huh? That I just did with an X-Acto knife. And then um, I just put a little white sheet over the Polish quote, left it like this and left it in there so they'd know it's a tuck-in spot. Sometimes people need, even with your best intentions, you could make a tuck spot or something like that when you give it as a gift. But if they're not crafty people, they could literally look at that and not know what to do with it. Um, or if you don't write the word photo, they won't put, the, they won't put a photo in it. Um, this, I think, is pretty self-explanatory, but I still might put some things there. So I think I'm ready to decorate just a cover, and um, yeah, then I'll show you a look at the finished product. Okay, I think I'm all finished. I just added the elements to the front cover, so let me show you. You know what I actually did is I took the, um, this was a page of, extras to cut it was a single-sided page and it meant to cut out each one of these elements but instead I thought it was so cute just as pattern paper for the cover and it's a little bit thicker than um than regular pattern paper so I just cut a portion for the front and um then for the spine and then for the back and just added a few little quotes from the quotes pack and a few little embellishments you can see the glitter and uh, yep some of the little butterflies that's just so cute to me for a cover and I thought about adding a ribbon um, to close it up but then I decided not to I thought this will just be fine the way it is so then when you open it up I just added a quote and a little and a little what is that a little bear or a little animal and then you open it up and nothing's different up here just place for a photo and uh, elements you can write here's special delivery I love that and then I did add let me sit down here uh, a little quote up here and some balloons now let me show you though what I did when I adhered them is I only put adhesive here so that they can um, the person can put a photo right here you see behind that and I think that's going to be cute 
Then the next page, and all these envelope openings I think are perfect for the, you know, all the millions of cards you get for, you know, congratulations cards and baby shower cards and things like that. They're perfect to go in here and then you can keep everything, like a little keepsake album. Here's a little quote, and again, um, just two embellishments, but, and I know this picture doesn't, I, I mean, obviously I'll co cover up my son here, but um, just to show that you'll slide that behind, you know. Here's another one, and same thing here uh, with a picture, and maybe they need to trim a little bit in the pictures, you know, um, they might need to trim off a little bit. And then this opens up. Okay, and you can put a smaller photo here. I almost wonder if that needs a quote right there. Maybe, maybe not. No, maybe, well, what could I put? Now that I'm looking at it a second time, what could we put there? Um, maybe not a yellow one. Hashtag joy. Hashtag, no, I think it's fine the way it is. It's fine. Sometimes less is more, huh? Yeah, because here, then this one has a few fold outs that go like this. And then, I, at first I was going to have you be able to put a thing behind that, and then I decided against it, um, just because I think this is going to be a little bit too much. There's a magnet closure there. And then here, here's another instance where you'll slide the, you have to tip up the photo here, or the, the page and you could just slide that photo right behind the the rabbits just like that and then I put a little quote down there and then I just put a little embellishment here with a quote and this is a pocket in the back now the front does not have a pocket um, but I did that I wanted to keep this smooth because I figured they were gonna put a photo right here and I thought well You'd want a photo against a smooth surface, so I left that like that. And then in the back, yeah, cool. I like that. I like that album. I'm very happy with the way it looks. And, um, yeah, I hope you like it, too. Of course, you can use, you know, any paper that you want. If you're interested in this paper, it is by Craft O'Clock. Uh, check the description box because depending on when you see this video, it may or may not be available in the Sandpaper Road shop. I'm trying to keep this uh, store stocked, and uh, so definitely check the link below um, and see if it is available in the in the Sandpaper Road shop. The paper does come from Poland. That's Poland, Europe, not Poland, Ohio. <laughs> so it does come overseas, and so there, like I said, it may or may not be in stock. But thanks so much for watching, and um, thank you to Craft O'Clock for providing the paper and the, the cover. I just love these covers. Hope you were inspired um, to make your own little envelope album, your little keepsake album to make or to give as a gift. And um, thanks so much for hitting that subscribe button. It really means a lot, and thank you to all of my subscribers. Really, really appreciate all of you. I'm going to include a few more videos here on the left that you might enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.